Uh, it was interesting. Uh, first of all, we uh, had a 4:10 wake up call, and then our flight was at 6 a.m. scheduled. And we got on the plane, and we sat there for about two hours. And it was windy. It wasn't snowing at the time, but it snowed like prior to that, and it was incredibly windy everywhere. So snow was flying everywhere, and we ended up deplaning after two hours, and which was interesting. And then I want to say around 11:30, we waited around till they rescheduled the flight and all that or just delayed it, and then we ended up, they ended up canceling it. So we, Sims came in, came in the clutch and found us a Minneapolis flight direct to Fort Wayne, which was pretty awesome. And, but the only thing was it was at 5.55, and it was like a four hour bus ride, and it was like one o'clock. So we got there at like 5.27 to be exact, and the flight was at 5.55. And we got through security real quick, kinda, we got help from the workers there and got us through it. And they closed the doors on us. And we were like, we were all right there, kind of. And then the, the, everyone started waving, and then the pilot saw us, and they came back. And we got back at like 10 p.m., I think, back in my, my uh, apartment. So it was quite the, quite the trip. It was a mess getting there, too. Yeah. But. Uh, just talk about the trip then, because obviously, postponed day one. You win, and then you have to go over to the next place, and then you win. So was it, I mean, adversity brings the best out of this team? Um, I mean, the good thing was it was only an hour in between them, or like an hour and a half. But, yeah, like we got postponed the first day because we were having a three-and-a-half-hour drive up to play that day. And we were all, we, I mean, we, were, we did film in the morning. We were, we were ready to play that night, but it just didn't work out. And yeah, we just kind of, we had a back-to-back -back days and we knew what we had to do to get two wins. Uh, so obviously North Dakota State, that one was a big one. You had 21 in the second half or something. Was it a conversation with Coach that you kind of felt like you needed to maybe not take over, but, but assert yourself offensively and, and talk a little bit about the, what went into the, the game winner? Um, I mean, the, my, my teammates just really helped me out. and get, we, I got open. I got a couple shots open. I was, made, this, made some threes, and I just felt confident, and I kind of just tried to take over. What was that last play? What was the, what was the game winner like? Um, I was going to shoot it no matter what, and I shot it, and I made it, and it went in. So. Uh, the next game, obviously, a big one. I mean, South Dakota State, they, they've not run the conference, but they've been at the top of the conference the last few years. Uh, What's the matchup kind of like? What do you perceive from the matchup, and what do you guys need to do to get a win? Um, they can score the ball really well, and we just need to put crowd or put Dom and uh, Jenkins in crowds and flatten as well. And we just need to play our brand of basketball and get defensive stops. Uh, obviously, without Scott this year, it's a little bit of a different team. How have you guys kind of found your identity so far this year? Uh, we just meshed well, really, well, really well together this year, and we just moved the ball, and anyone can score 20 any night, which really helps this team. So it's it's positive. Uh, I mean, it was, in my 20 years, the uh, the most challenging travel we've ever had on both ends. Um, from, you know, two canceled flights, you know, having to figure out. I mean, we, we had tickets to Fargo and from Fargo, neither of which we used. Uh, ended up, you know, traveling through Minneapolis and then, you know, made four and five hour bus trips there, um, anticipated on the front end um, that we were going to have to, you know, bust the final six hours and then play the game, uh, day of game, and then uh, league stepped in at the 11th hour uh, just to make sure that, that our student athletes had a safe trip there. We weren't rushing to make that, that 7 o'clock tip, and, and uh, on the way back had, uh, had a really really nice Delta Airlines pilot who uh, saw 15 Dons waving at the plane as it's pulling, backing up, uh, and, and, and brings the plane back, docks it. They come out. They let us get on the plane to get home last night. Um, and then a final five of our travel party got back through South, uh, South Bend, um, and they brought all the bags with us. So we, we got everybody back. A um, lot, lot of issues, but honestly, it was a great growing experience and uh, great road toughness for our group because our team never flinched. Uh, my, our, 
our coaching staff uh, was extremely good in terms of they, they just fixed everything. And our players didn't see any real issues with it uh, because we were constantly fixing the travel and just great team effort to go on the road. And then, you know, obviously we showed road tough getting to on the road. In back-to-back -back games, first time we've ever had to play uh, conference back-to-back -back other than in conference tournament. And the, the presentation I put to our group is, hey, this is like uh, going to a quarterfinal game, winning a quarterfinal game in the Summit League tournament in the Dakotas, which we do, and then turning around and let's, let's play the semifinal. Uh, to, to, to get to the championship round, and, and our guys played it to perfection there. And, you know, we go to North Dakota State um, after winning at North Dakota, and we're down 12 at halftime, down 15 with 13 minutes left. Our guys hadn't really played well. North Dakota State had just played that well, and we just kind of go – you know, one play at a time and end up, you know, taking the lead in the final two minutes. Uh, they make a – North Dakota State makes a great play to send to overtime. And then we have 25 seconds left. Uh, call a timeout, tie ball game. And I asked John before I walk into the timeout, and I said, do you want a ball screen or do you want it one-on-one, -on -one, low, low one-four like you did, like you won a game at Omaha two years ago. And he said, just give me some space. And he makes a huge game winner um, to win the game. So it was, uh, it was a great, great team effort on the road. What was it, because you talked about the North Dakota State game, uh, he had 21, Contra did in the second half or something. Do you ever have to have a conversation with him that, that maybe he needs to take over a little bit more? And and how has he kind of progressed as, as, a, as a, the go-to guy a little bit this year? Well, that was kind of coming into the year. And that's been a two- or three-year progression with him because that's something we've been communicating and working on for, you know, for a long time. I mean, for the last – you know, three years, you know, maybe minus Max Landis, he's been the most efficient player on, on, on our team. Um, and so wanting him to take over, sometimes when you have a guy who over his career shot close to 60% and he makes a one more pass or an extra pass to a guy who's a really good shooter shooting 40%, that's still 20 percentage points you're giving up. And so being able to take over and, and uh, you know, make a play down the stretch has been something we've been working really, really hard at with him, and, and he's done that. He's done that all year long. He and Case and Harrell have been phenomenal in terms of their leadership on the floor, and, and I mean, John had a phenomenal weekend and you know we had a lot of other contributors great team efforts Dylan Carl you know had his probably his toughest game of his career at North Dakota uh, at North Dakota um, but then John just took over the game 21 in regulation uh, six of the eight points in overtime so 27 after the first half to make 38 and you know I, I made jokes on my post game that uh, I was really disappointed they only had eight rebounds he was under his average for rebounds and uh, but but just he, he's He's been tremendous. Yeah. Uh, no rest for the, the your team right now because you get arguably the best team in the conference, South Dakota State, coming in here. Uh, what do you see out of them, and what do you need to do to to take them out? Well, it was, it was nice the fact that we were able to get back yesterday. So we were able to do a little bit of work today. But they've been sitting on us. They, they got to play. Uh, they played prior to the weekend. Um, so they've been sitting on us for a while. So they'll come in well-rested. Um, but, you know, we'll have two days prep. We're used to that with our non-league play and, and turn around. And, I mean, it's going to be a great college basketball game. I mean, you know, at any one time, you know, there's going to be five, six, maybe even seven all-league players on the floor between their roster and our roster. Um, and, and, you know, arguably two of the best mid-major players in the country with uh, with Mike Dom and, and John Conchar and, and definitely, you know, two of the best three or four uh, uh, Summit League players ever to play the game are going to be on the floor with Mike and John and just great college basketball game. And for our guys, great challenge. Um, you know, we, we, we give a lot of respect to South Dakota State. Um, you know, they, they've they've won the league the last couple years, you know, so we got to say, hey, you know, it's, it's no disrespect to our group that we got to play through South Dakota State in our league. And so that's the great challenge. Um, but they're coming to our place. We're playing really good basketball right now. And uh, we'll be ready for them on Thursday.